back at it at the basement build. So the inspector just left and we have a lot of things to correct. Uh, one of the biggest problems we came across was the interconnected smoke alarms. Uh, and I'll get to that in a bit, but we're gonna have to run a new wire, a new panel for it. Uh, but I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna go through some of the things that we're gonna have to fix. And later on, you'll see videos on how I'm gonna go through to fix them. First, we're gonna talk about the kitchen area. So he was fine with the fridge plug. He's saying fridge plugs, no problem. Uh, we can leave it there. Uh, issue with the kitchen countertop. So the rule is uh, from the beginning of the countertop, within three feet in, you need to have a plug in place. Any countertop more than a foot, you also need to have a countertop in place. So in this case here, there might be a countertop that's longer than a foot, so we'll have to put a counter plug there. I'm thinking I might just put a cabinetry there instead, put a little pantry so I can get rid of that plug. And then the sink's gonna go there, and then with the countertop space from the stove, which is the end, which is the end of the counter to where the sink is, it's definitely more than three feet. So from the sink, which is the beginning, within three feet, I'm gonna need to have a plug. And then from the end of where the edge of the stove is, within three feet, I'll need a plug. So if that plug there is within three feet of both, I'm gonna be perfectly fine. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some measurements and mock up where I'm gonna have to have a plug because I might have to have two there rather than there just one. Now, another rule that he talked about was that in a kitchen countertop area, you need to have two circuits for the countertop plugs. Okay, so there's a trick behind it. I can switch this 14-2 wire for 14-3 wire. So the extra wire in there would count as two circuits with one plug. Or what I can do is run two separate circuits, uh, two separate circuits for two separate plugs in this area here. Uh, one thing I also did incorrectly was I didn't need to have a 12-2 wire, a 12-gauge wire for the microwave. I actually should have just used that 12-gauge wire for my countertop plugs instead. With my stove plug down here, I've mounted it way too high. And the reason for that is because normally at the back of the stove, there's a cavity that comes, that comes in so you can hide the plug and it doesn't stick out. So having at that height, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for me to push a stove right up against the wall So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to sit it down closer to the base plate So the rule is it has to be the center of that box has to be within uh, Five inches from the floor plate up. So what he told me was what people normally do is there's one two by four there That's one and a half inches and then if you stack another two by four on top, that's uh, five inches I'm sorry, that's three inches and then by the time you add the box down, it'll be perfect height. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna stack a two by four on there and then mount that box directly down. Another thing is this box is more than four, it is within, it's a four inch diameter. So anything more than, with anything that's four inches or more is gonna require uh, fastening on the other side. So on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to build this out, put another two by four there so that I can secure this and there's not enough push there, okay? So there's not, not too much movement there. Now, the stove is gonna go, so the countertop's gonna end there, stove's gonna go here, and then from the stove onwards, within six feet, there needs to be a plug. So I'm, I'm probably within that six feet range there, so I'm okay. And then from there, every 12 feet, we need a plug. As you can tell, within 12 feet, I've got more plugs than I need. I went a little overkill there, but that's okay. Bedroom, he said everything was good. Um, there's some things I have to clean up. So some of these old wiring, old plugs that are here, I'm gonna take them all out. I take out all the old wiring. Uh, some of the junction boxes I'm gonna have to keep there or get rid of it and wire things directly to, to the source instead of having a bunch of these junction boxes around. I'll probably leave it there and add an access panel. Moving on to the furnace room. So the furnace room, there's a switch here to turn it off that's inside. So you probably see it here. Inside here, there's a switch. What they want me to do is move that switch on the outside of the room. So it was probably okay before because everything was open, so you can access that easily. But now that I'm gonna have walls put in here, the idea is if there's a fire going on in the room, what I need to do is be able to access that switch, turn it off, 
without injuring myself. So I'm gonna rewire that outwards so that it sits right above here. In the bathroom, everything was fine except for the pancake box here. So these pancake boxes are designed for vanity lights. And it turns out um, that you can only feed one wire through these. You're only allowed one. And I also didn't have the, the plastic piece to protect this here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that two by four on the side. I'm gonna mount an actual box instead of a pancake box. Then I can have the two wires in there and everything's gonna be okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to put more of those metal plates such as these ones up here. Any holes on the joists that are from the edge, one inch and a quarter, I believe is what he said. If, if, there's, if there's less than that gap, I'm gonna have to put a plate there so that my drywall screws do not go through and puncture any wires. I'm gonna need a three-way switch here for the light that's up there, okay? So the idea is if someone comes down here, they can turn on, turn on the light up there and turn it off as they get down here, okay? So what I'm gonna have to do, since there's already an existing switch and existing light up there, all I'm gonna do is run a 14 three wire from that switch down to this switch here so that this can be connected uh, to the light above. Dryer, same thing, I have to move it downwards because some of these wires are actually super short. So I'm gonna move that further down. Uh, yeah, so I'm moving a lot, a, lot, a lot further down so I can control it later on. Or so that I can purchase a dryer, plug it in without having an extension. On this side, Basically, all the same things that they, we talked about on the other side of the unit would apply. The only tricky part here would be the smoke detectors. So, he's talked about a bunch of rules and how the building code and the fire code actually aren't connecting very well because the building code requires all the fire uh, interconnected, all the smoke alarms to be interconnected. Whereas the fire code requires it to be interconnected, but it has to come from separate circuits. Uh, separate circuit meaning one unit has one circuit and this unit on another circuit. This, this smoke detector on one circuit and the other unit smoke detector on a separate circuit. So what he's making me do now is I'm gonna have to run a new, a new wire to, to, to have another 100 amp panel on the other side, which is a second unit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have a one, I'm gonna have to buy a 100 amp breaker. I'm gonna have to buy three, three wiring, which is way thicker gauge, and run it all the way across to the other side. And I'll likely position the box in the same place as the other one, right above or right below that window there. And then what that's gonna do is I'm gonna have to now rerun all the wiring from here over to that box and waste a bunch of time and wire, but it'll be all right. Another thing we talked about were the ducts. So when the wire is touching the ducts, obviously it's heating and cooling, so it deteriorates the, the jacket of the duct, the insulation. So what we're supposed to do is stuff, uh, it, sh it should be an inch of separation. So what I'll be doing is I'm gonna put uh, pink insulation in between each of the wires for all the ducts that are touching wires so that I can protect it before the inspection comes. Uh, another thing you talked about were these holes in these junction boxes. So these holes need to be covered back up again. Oh, also the stapling. I need to double check the boxes for the stapling to make sure that whatever I'm using these staples for, uh, it's actually this, the correct staple. The holes that are, that, are, that are drilled and the wires that are running through it, uh, we can't stuff too many wires through it because or else it'll heat up. Uh, some of the wiring that are bunched together he said it's okay to have a bunch together, but he prefers to have it two or three wires at a time so that they don't generate too much heat. So you can see there's a bunch there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate them all and, and, and make it a lot, a lot cleaner. Some of the other things to note is anything with, uh, any gangable boxes, so any, anything with two or more that are ganged together, I'll need another support on this side. So I have to do that for all the boxes. Um, over here, I'll need uh, to stretch this more because I only have about three inches. I need six inches of wiring. Again, I need a support on this side. Uh, some, of the, some of the stapling, I thought it was within a foot from the box, you'll need a staple, but no, it was within a foot of wiring. So this would be a foot here, so I should staple this and leave this, the rest of this hanging. So I did not know that before, and now I do. 
those things will be fixed. So this armored cable is actually going from one smoke detector to another smoke detector in the common area and then smoke detector to the third area. Uh, why it's armored is because our ESA inspectors said that it should be armored and it should also be painted red in case someone opens it and so they don't cut the wire or anything like that because it's a safety issue. So here we are, we're gonna paint them red and we should be good to go. All right, so this is the first alarm in the circuit. You can see that this is the power wire coming in. This is the neutral, this is the live wire. Um, what happens is this actually branches off a circuit of the hallway lights, which is right there. So that if there's a problem with the, with the fuse panel and the breaker is flipped off, then immediately you can tell that the main lights are not working, which means the fire alarms are not working. Okay, so that's a way to help you tell. All right, that's a good way to do it. So that if there is a problem, it'd be noted right away so that your fire alarms are always gonna be on. Okay, so the wire comes in like this. This powers up the, uh, the circuit. These three-way wires, 14 three wires, are attached to each of them. So this was synced to the second one, which is synced to the third one. Um, in the previous videos, you might have seen that this is actually coming from some armored cable. So I have to put armored cable for the three wire that's going between the units, and I've also had to paint it red. So if anyone were to open the walls, they would know not to cut this wire. Okay, so this is what the inspector told me to do. This is what I've done. Let's hope we pass.